Hey everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to a tutorial. Today I'm going to create a master board and we're going to turn it into a mini zine. So I wanted to use yellow and orange and pink and I wanted to brayer on the paint. I love the texture and the patterning that you get when you brayer on. Now I'll be honest, when I started brayering, I I guess I want it more control, and there's a certain unpredictability with brayering. But when you embrace that, it is a fast, easy way of really building backgrounds and adding a lot of interest to a page or a master board. So I'm putting on the bright yellow, um, actually I believe this is Naples yellow, it's Artist Loft brand, and it's a little lighter than the Liquitex brand, but it's all that was available. Now I just want to brighten it up, so I'm adding the bright yellow on there. And I'm trying to keep the brayer going horizontally or vertically, not at an angle. I'm applying different amounts of pressure, starting and stopping. My goal here is to not really worry too much about composition. Just play with color. As you brayer it on, I use a little bit and I add more paint. I love how you get these white spaces. Here I'm adding orange. Now my goal here, my thought initially was do more kind of citrusy feel. But like most things, it does take a life of its own. Now where it got really dark there with the orange, didn't like that space, but that's okay. When you're brayering, you know you're going to be putting more layers on and you can always cover that up with other colors at a later state. And it's nice to have some darker areas, some lighter areas as well. So either when you add white, that just kind of pushes everything back, dolls up the bright. You see how I've pushed the, those dark orange spots that I didn't like with the white acrylic paint. You could also use white gesso there. Sometimes you put a layer of white that knocks it back. Remember, our goal is to create interesting layers. And I know I'm going to do some stamping and some stenciling later on. And I want that to be more forefront. And while I already gave out the end, you know that I'm going to make a mini zine out of this. When I started this, I wasn't sure if I was going to make ATCs out of it, if I was going to use this for an Insta background on an art journal page. All of those things are possible. It was looking a little too orange, so I decided to add medium magenta. And I really loved how the pink just really made this pop. And as you can see, I'm turning the page as I brayer this on. Going around the edges, kind of frames it a little bit. Loving the look. Now I want to add some more orange in there. You can just have fun. Pick two or three colors or more and layer them up. See what kind of magic happens. You might be surprised and discover something that you really like. Now I'm adding white again, knocking back some of the bright spots. The brayer I'm using is a Ranger brayer. It is a two inch one, I believe. I find I have more success with it than a four inch brayer. So if you're struggling with the brayering, 
and, and you're using a four inch, you may want to try a two inch. So totally loving the background and ready to add some stamping. Now this stamp set is from Stamperia and it's called Sacred Ge Geometry. And I love the circular motifs and designs on it. And this, these are available at ninniesnapkins.com. And there is a link and a discount code in the description box below. So I'm stamping on the gel plate here. I put some magenta paint. I'm sticking right now to the same colors that are in the background. I just want to add more interest. And I'm using some of these wonderful circular patterns of these stamps. And oh, you know, I love this stamp set when I purchased it. And I loved it even more now that after I was able to use it for the first time. And I'm picking some dark burgundy ink here. So I'm stamping with acrylic paint and with ink. Now I grab some turquoise paint and I'm this Fentangle stencil, which is TCW. Ninny's Napkins also carries TCW stencils. And if she doesn't have this particular one, just drop her a line. She is always really willing to bring in things that people require. And I love how this turquoise really pops off of this. This is fantastical. And I grabbed the alizarin crimson. And when I added this dark, rich pink, this master board just really started to sing to me. I was just, I was so happy at this point. It just all came together. And then, and usually that's what happens as you keep going. And I'm turning the stencil to get some motion on here. And remember, at this point, I didn't know what I was going to do with this brayered background, this master board. Now I decided to do some more stamping on the turquoise, introduce that color a little bit more, back with that those Stamperia stamps. And I will be using these stamps later on when I'm creating the focal images. So they're used both in the background and in the focal images. When you use acrylic paint with your stamps, make sure you take the time to clean the stamps off. I spray with my Murphy's oil soap mixture and I scrub them with a brush or just wipe it off with the baby wipe. This is another stamp, Left Spiral from Stamperia. You can also get this at ninniesnapkins.com. And I love the swirl. I love the size of this stamp. And I'm stamping with white. It kind of knocks back some of them, but adds that interesting motion. I've got lots of motion and interest on this master board. Don't forget to stamp off the page. And then I'm cleaning it. There's a, using an old brush. Loving, loving, loving the master board. So I'm kind of looking for an idea of what I'm going to do with it. Am I going to use it for a page? And then I decide, you know, it's been a while since I did a mini zine. So I'm folding this hamburger and then hot dog style corner to corner and then inside like this. And I'll put a link to a tutorial where I do this at a slower rate and give step by step. So now I just want to cut in the middle part. And it's really hard with all the patterning to see where I need to cut. So that's what I'm struggling with a little bit there. You can draw a line if you're unsure. Then you scoosh it together and form it into this booklet. And I'm just shaping it, getting everything to sit flat. If the edges aren't exactly perfect, you can trim them if that's something that bothers you or, or not. Now I'm just putting glue 
on it and I struggled with some glue sticks there that were dried out putting the glue and you got to work pretty quick squeeze it together and press it down get all those pages together reaching in making sure all the edges are glued down And there I am trimming a little bit off. You could also take, you know, when you edge, any of that white showing can be colorized and then you won't really see it. So that's another option to cutting it off. Mine was a little wonky, wasn't exactly perfectly flat. looking at the pages that it's have now created and trying to think where I want to go with this. So I decide that I'm going to turn this on its side. Now here I'm drawing a flower. Now I've got some of these drawn flowers, just different sizes. And I'm just, I tested out the size that I wanted. And then I just drew it on with my Stabilo All Pencil. And now I'm filling it in with gesso. Now, yes, the Stabilo All Pencil is activating and you're getting those gray tones in there. But when I add color, that's actually going to add some shading and depth to my flower. So I'm not worried about it. And I'm going to also be adding more coats of gesso here. Letting it dry and then coming in with more another coat. I love how the swirls there frame that flower and that becomes part of the page and why I chose to put that focal image in that corner. And every page, when you do a mini zine, you are presented with a different challenge, a different orientation, and you have to play with what's there. Some of it you may want to cover up. Some of it you may want to keep. Now, I, I toyed with the idea of keeping this white. Would you have kept it white? I'm loving the swirls, so I'm just giving them a little bit, painting over them just to make them stand out a little bit more, have a little more presence on the page, become more of the focal point as opposed to something in the background. And I'm using a liner brush and the acrylic paint that has been thinned just a smidge. Then I grab the Naples yellow. It's in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I've got, you know, three pages inside. I'm going to do one in Naples yellow, the focal image, one in the turquoise, and one in the alizarin crimson. I'm sticking to for the focal image, the same colors that are in the background. Now there's not much of that yellow that's peeking through in the background, but it is there and that's why this works. So when you're selecting a, a color scheme or focal images, you know, pick something that is in the background. Or if you pick something that's not in the background, you can introduce it to the background at this stage. Playing with some things that I have on my desk to see if I can put something, you know, collage piece in the center of that flower. Decide I'm going to add some of the pink in there to make this kind of a corally color and I'm shading using my acrylic, floating acrylic technique and my angle brush.
shading around the outside, just making that focal, trying to make that focal image stand out even more. Didn't like what was happening there, wiped it off. When everything's a curl look underneath, you can do that without disturbing anything underneath. Playing with the orientation, and I decide now I'm deciding what sentiment to use. And I decided that I am going to use all some all the sentiments from or sentiments from my perseverance pack. So all the messages on here are going to be in the theme of perseverance. I like picking or having a theme. So we have the colors are the same page after page, as well as now the theme is. Now I believe these sentiments are the original size, but I just want to remind you that when you buy my sentiment packs, you can resize them. You can shrink them down to fit. If I was doing this on an ATC, I would have actually shrunk them down and they would have still fit. And there is a video that shows how to use your printer settings to shrink them down so you get more usability from your sentiment packs. And as always, my sentiment packs are available at ninnysnapkins.com. Using the Stabilo All Pencil around the sentiments just to make that stand out. Adding a little bit of black with the Stabilo around here. I just, I, I struggled. The, the flower, it just was, something was missing here and I wasn't sure what it was. So I kept coming back to this page. And adding something and then I move on to other pages and then I come back. Then I wanted to frame it, just like I frame my art journal pages. Basically, I am treating this part of the mini zine as a single art journal page. And I love how that black around the edges just really makes this stand out. It frames it. It just does a world of good. I'm adding to it because I'm thinking it's lacking something. And then I decide, you know what, leave it and move on. Oh, not yet. I decide I wanted to put a stamp, some patterning in the center of the flower, a little bit more interest. So I grab one of the stamps from that Sacred Geometry stamp set and I stamped the design in there. First I made a mask. Now I moved on. This is a stencil that I cut. I love this botanical stencil so much. Something about that shape. It's really easy. You can cut your own. And then I decide I'm going to put lots of turquoise on here. And I'm loving how that turquoise is really popping. Deciding I'm going to put one of the sentiments down at the bottom. Just kind of positioning it to see where I may want to put this one. Spoiler alert, I love this page of the mini zine. I think it's my favorite. Let me know which one's your favorite. So even though our background was really busy by stenciling on top, that background was definitely pushed into the background. And that turquoise is amazing. 
Now I'm using the shading floating acrylic technique and black paint to shade around this to make that frond stand out even more. And edging, always edging. Just doing a little bit of shading on the white one that I put there with the pink. I don't want it to be forward, but I did want it to stand out a little more than what it was. Playing with the sentiments. I wanted to do this one and it kind of got messy. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll color it all. Didn't like that. That ended up gone. And then I chose the saying, the key to success is playing the hand you got like it was the one you wanted. Make whatever happens work. And that goes for the art journal page too, right? If something doesn't work, keep going. Try something else, try something else. Embrace what's there. Because sometimes those mistakes, quote unquote, are the things that really make a page very, very special. The surface that I'm working on right now, I actually bought a big glass sheet that I put right across my tabletop. So the whole thing is glass, it's all one level, and the paint comes off of it so easy, it's great for the floating acrylic technique, everything. So then I decide to splatter with gold, so then I go back and I'm splattering this one with gold, and then I splatter this one with turquoise. I told you I keep coming back to it. Then I decide, oh, I think I wanna add that, I'm that turquoise to the center of this flower. I loved it, that turquoise so much on the other one, I really wanted to bring it out. Add a little bit more stenciling on here. Because just because on the master board you had it to a certain level doesn't mean that that's where you have to leave it. You can always add. Then I grab my Secura glaze pan and I do dashes all the way around the flower. And this made me happy. This, I felt really added to the flower, gave it a little something more than from what was missing. Now the Secura Glaze is very bold black. It's dimensional and it's shiny. So it adds a lot to the page. So my next page, I decide I'm going to make a focal image with hearts. And instead of drawing the hearts on there and painting it out like I did the Naples yellow flower, I decided I'm gonna grab a piece of paper and paint it the alizarin crimson color with a little bit of that Naples yellow mixture. And then I'm cutting out four hearts that I'm going to turn into a flower. but I like the big boldness. Now I want these hearts to stand out, so I'm shading around them using the float acrylic technique, but this time I'm doing it before I glue them down. You could wait. When I try them on, then I decide I want a little bit more. And I decide to stamp the turquoise with the shelf liner on top of that those red flowers, the red hearts that I turn into a flower. Again, this is introducing that turquoise color that's in the background into the front, giving it a little bit more texture. I could have done white if I'd wanted to. Now I want a center, so I'm painting the turquoise. And I grab another one of those stamps from the Sacred Geometry set with a black acrylic paint, 
I'm stamping it out. And I stamp out many at this time because I have all the stuff out. The stamp's dirty. I might as well stamp more than I need and leave them in the stash. And actually, I end up using them on the um, cover. And I'm fussy cutting them out. I place it so that some of them are actually falling, going off the page. And I love how that stamp became the center of that flower. So you see with that Stamperia set, I have the stamps in the background and I have the stamps that I've used in the focal images. And I absolutely love this color combo, that Naples yellow, the alizarin crimson, and the turquoise. And I will definitely use those colors again. And if you haven't given that a combo a try, give it a try. Have the quote here, I didn't come this far to only come this far. Playing with it, thought maybe I would add a few more of those turquoise motifs. Decided not. <clears throat> I'm gluing everything down with TCW's matte gel medium. Splattering it with gold. That gold splatter is just, it looks so good on all the pages. It really reads well with the Naples yellow. And you have that shimmer. And of course, I'm edging the page. And you can just see how big of a difference that little step does to the page. It frames it, it sets it off, it finishes it. Now with the mini zine, you could do each side as a separate page if you wanted to, and I've done that. This one, I didn't want to put black on, so I added, did the dot, dot, or the dash with white. Would you have gone black? And I'm using a Sakura Bold. It's number 10, and, I, and it is permanent once it's dry. So I still had some more of that red, and I grabbed another one of those Sacred Geometry stamps, and I stamped that out. And with the ones that I had from the turquoise, I'm putting this, this is the cover, the front and the back. So I'm making a focal image just with the stamped images. And I love, like they're circles, which I love using, but they have that pattern. So I will definitely be using that stamp set again and again. Then I decided I'll put a sentiment on the back as well. <clears throat> this says perseverance, stubbornness with a purpose. And the other one, it's not the will. It's it's not this, it's not the will, it's this no. It's the will, not the skill. <laughs> Sorry. Edging. So the same finishing steps on all of them. You shade around what you want to make pop. Secure a glaze pen. Links to all my usual Christmas or <laughs> all my usual art journaling supplies can be found below as well. And there's the finished zine. I hope you love it as much as I do. I hope you give a brayered beginning and make a mini zine. Thanks so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up. Share with your creative friends. Follow me on Instagram. Bye.